morning everybody. Welcome to another episode of Cooper's Empty Lifestyle. It is early in the morning, it is 6 a.m. and we are in Gig Harbor. We're going to be hanging out with Curtis and he's getting his ROVs set up and we're going to put the ROVs in the water, kind of look around. Uh, he's got another gentleman that's going to be flying his drone so we're going to get some aerial footage. And I am the diver today so if we see something the ROV can't bring up or we get a little bit of an entanglement issue, then I'll be splashing and helping untangle the ROV. So we're gonna have two kinds of ROVs in the water. The gray one is gonna be equipped with an underwater metal detector and the yellow one is gonna have the claw. And we're also gonna have a drone pilot flying his drone to provide overhead footage. So the gray ROV is going to have this small underwater metal detector that will have a green light on and when it hits a metallic object, it'll blink red. Both ROVs are equipped with lights and the yellow one has the claw that can go underwater and grab an object and help bring it back to the surface. So what are you, what are you seeing as you're piloting? Uh, just uh, whatever is below me, boats and... Uh, it's a pretty clear image, nice yeah. big tablet. Yeah. yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, it works out quite well. Been doing it for quite a few years. How, how long have you been uh, uh, piloting a drone? I've had my Arbor drone business for about four years now, and I've been uh, flying drone probably for about, uh, what, nine years or so? Eight yeah, years, do you have years. a nickname or a name? No, uh, no? Just Harbor Drone Service. A Harbor Drone Service. <laughs> There he is, he's flying his drone just above the boats right there. Getting an awesome view on his tablet. Here's a great view of Gig Harbor coming in from the Puget Sound. Beautiful, awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Curtis, he's got his ROV right there. Oh, looks like he's got a little juvenile uh, crab that looks like a little dungy crab, very tiny. This area is crawling with juvenile Dungeness crab. And then you see he's got his cord right there that goes all the way. Kevlar tether. Kevlar tether. tether. It's a Kevlar tether. And you see it going all the right there to the ROV. So we're going to operate the ROV. And then we're going to get in the water, kind of look around. So up, down. Okay. Easy enough. Turn. Left. Right. Now, if I see something really cool underwater, like an old bottle, how do I pick it up with the, the claw? A little rotator right here. Okay. See this button right here? Yep. That closes it. That opens it. You stop halfway if you want. All right. Okay. All right. Here's our diver right here. All right. There it goes. He's kinda, he's I was kinda. just getting used to the controls. Okay, so we got. We need a point. There we go. Let's point towards a little deep. Climbing over here. Climbing over here. Where'd Mr. Murray Where'd go? Mr. Murray go. Uh, you have to go throw some peanuts off. So I'm trying to get used to the controls. It's actually a very complex thing for a beginner to be able to control an ROV. So it actually is pretty fun. You can go around and the visibility is kind of murky today. It's about 10 foot visibility. Um, once you touch the bottom, you can stir up the sediment. So you just got to go really slow with the controls. And there is a limited amount of time because of the battery. 
So after we're done playing with the yellow ROV, I'm going to go into the water, do some diving, and Curtis is going to set up his gray ROV and start operating that. Uh, some of you might wonder why I'm wearing one fin. It's because I have a prosthetic leg. I don't need to wear a fin on my prosthetic leg. So that's why I have one fin. So it could be three feet deep, or it could be ten feet deep. So while I'm diving, I'm going to be using my small Vibratech metal detector to see if I can pick up anything uh, that has fallen off the dock into the water and also clean up some trash along the way. So the first thing we find is a traffic cone that's fairly fresh, hasn't been in the water too long. It's got a sign on the back. So we're just going to put the traffic cone on the dock and maybe the original owner can collect it later. So we're going to be metal detecting in the water for about two hours. We're in 10 to 15 feet of water and the visibility quickly turns to zero once you start stirring it up. Well look at that, we have cell phone number one. And here is cell phone number two. And here is cell phone number three. And there is cell phone number four we just found with metal detecting. After a couple hours of detecting in the water with about zero visibility, let's go up and take a look at all of our finds. So I was doing uh, some metal detecting with the Vibratech, my backup metal detector. The, the primary, the Garrett C Hunter Mark II is at home in the garage. So I always uh, had my backup with me. So, I kind of stayed in a 20 foot radius and uh, there's a lot of targets so I just kind of didn't want to venture too far out and get hit by a boat. Um, you know, try to be somewhat close to the dock. So we're going to have a bunch of targets. Actually, ooh, I actually found a penny. Um, so here's probably the more interesting things and these bottles are full of mud. It's got barnacles on it, it won't even stand up. Uh, straight. Here's another bottle just full of mud. I'll dump those out before I throw them in the trash. Uh, cans, lids. What is this? This is, oh, cover of a cell phone. This is, uh, that thing for an oar, I think, maybe? An oar clips in there? Yeah, I'm that's entirely what it looks sure. Like. Yeah. So. Cell phone cover stuff, cans. <laughs> this thing was heavy when I pulled it out of the ground. This is basically a 10 pound weight. So 10 pound bench press weight. Um, I would have thought it was a rock. Right, you know, and it's like got all that growth on there. <laughs> it's just uh a fin of a prop and it snapped off i wonder if they hit something that caused it to snap off Those and are, i think they're brass, brass. They? yeah they're yeah. supposed to be brass and that's why it's not all rusted you know yeah, uh, yeah this is brass there's these uh washers that were in the ground they just got all that growth on it much like uh that weight it's a clothes pin uh, here's the cool part, pulling cell phones out of the water, one, two, three, four cell phones out of the water. Well, that one and you exploded. can see, yeah. yeah, look how the lithium batteries are just swelling and expanding on the, the phones. It's like just a carabiner. 
So that's all the trash we pulled out of the water. Oh, here's a fishing weight. Throw that in the bucket when I get yeah, home. Yeah, this one's burned. You can see the burn marks right there. Look, here's a, a, a Samsung battery. Look how it's swelled, but no phone. That, it's like the battery, it was just the battery, maybe a camera battery or whatever that just ended up in the water. And uh, it's just, it's just expanding and pushing yeah, out. You can see where the expanding right there. So that typically, this one I'm not so sure though. I think that one was the one that was buried pretty good too. So sometimes people throw like their IDs or something behind these covers. So um, maybe we'll find an ID or a card or something. I'm not entirely sure. It's it, it hasn't happened to me yet, but some people do find a card or something behind their phone. Let me just see if I can get some of the cover off to, to look behind it. Oh, you know what? I don't see anything. I can. It's it's kind of a see-through case. You can mm -hmm. see all the dirt. There's the name of the phone, iPhone. So that one's good. This one. This looks like it's an OtterBox style. I don't know if I can get get it with the phones being so swelled up. Might not be able to check this one. That one's kind of swelled up. This is, let's see. There we go. This is an Apple phone. Nothing behind this case. Did it just turn on? No. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it because with that salt water, it would have been. But you can see this one stayed intact. Yeah. Try to turn yeah. it on. See what happens. I doubt it would turn on. Come on. I mean, I'd be amazed. No, it's saver kind of thing. This one, let's see. Oh, I think this one might be a see-through case too. Yeah, you can see the water behind it. So nothing behind this one. So this one actually stayed intact too. This one didn't. So it was just this one and this one that the batteries expanded. These, the, those two actually withheld. That's going to be another episode of Cooper's Amputee Lifestyle, where I'm an amputee scuba diver, and I'm out chasing my hobbies, dreams, and adventures, and I want to inspire you to do the same, live life and love life, combat PTSD and depression. So thank you again for watching. Thank you for all your support. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share, hit the notification bell, stay up to date in all of our adventures, and we will see you on the next adventure. Take care, everybody. Thank you again. Mm -hmm.